And this is a very hard question, and I have children of my own that I don't get to see very often. Um, but, like, what what has been... Um, what what has been the impact on you personally um and i assume this you don't you don't have to confirm it or not but 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 from the separation of your children <laughs> yeah that's uh i mean that's the biggest uh, impact the cuz you know whatever whatever uh, people think on the internet i mean my kids are the fucking most important part of my life. They're what drives literally every day. Um, they're who I drive literally every day. <laughs> uh, and, and not having them around uh, is, it's devastating. It's a piece of you that's pulled away. And um, that's, uh, it's something I wouldn't wish on anyone. And I think uh, you may remember like uh, back when we were in the thick of, of kind of, really taking nasty jabs at each other. Sure. I sent you a message and just said, Hey man, uh, you know, all the internet bullshit aside, uh, family's family. And I hope, I hope things work out where everybody's, you know, everybody's safe. So I know you know all about it, but like when your kids get, uh, uh, when you, when you don't have access to your kids, um, it fucking sucks. You and, know, you wake up and, and don't really know what to do during the day. And you did say that. And of course we squashed the beef, you know, people don't realize like, like some people don't realize that, you know, we squashed that a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I said a lot of nasty, that? nasty things about you. You said a lot of nasty things about me. Um, and I, 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 I take it, you know, on board. Um, but like, um, when when you're separated from your children, um, uh, I will say especially you. You know, I, I have two kids. Uh, I think you have five. Um, it, it's it's a, a mental torture basically to to go through that. Correct. I mean, I'm I'm asking you, but like. Yeah. No, I mean, you're asking, but you know, like it, it is, uh, like I said, it's, um, my kids are a piece of me, uh, in, in a very real way. Like, uh, when I, when I see them, I, you know, I tell them like the, everything's different. I, different kids have, um, you know, I have different interactions with each one and, uh, and you feel it. Uh, my, <laughs> My oldest daughter, like, she's hilarious. She's uh, very sarcastic and, and snarky like I am. And so, like, uh, it's weird not, like, walking into a room and having her remind me that my nose got there 10 minutes earlier. <laughs> like, it sounds silly, but it's those little fucking things that, when those are gone, that's the spice, man. And, and it's not there. It's empty. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a lot of things, but like, um, I, I, I feel like, first off, let me ask you this. Um, you know, a, a lot of people have said that, that, um, you know, you were, um, I, I don't want to say the word abuse, but like, um, your children were not taken care of properly. Um, and that's been put out there in the public domain. It's been put out there by the state of Minnesota. Um, what would you say to that? No, actually the, there's some confusion there and it's, I mean, I don't talk about this because it's just my word at present. Um, when I actually can like show people documentation, I will, but the, uh, the allegations of abuse and neglect were actually screened out by child protective services. They're not part of any current allegations against us. Um, none of them were ever substantiated or even investigated. Those, uh, the two reports, the one from February and the one from May were both, um, were both ignored by child protective services services because there wasn't sufficient evidence 
uh, to proceed with anything. And further, um, even in the light of all of this, they found no basis for any of that. Uh, everything involving my children um, not being in my house right now has to do with the, uh, you know, with the search warrant that was executed on my house. That's, that's the sole basis. There are no allegations of neglect or abuse or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. I, but I, I mean, everybody, unfortunately, the way these things work, everybody has to just kind of don't, well, don't. Actually, don't take my word on it. I'll say it. But eventually, I'll show you. I just can't yet. Right. Well, of course, and um, people may not understand um, so. fully, uh, like when you're, you know, they're trying to put you in jail, basically, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like they, they, they have you, um, uh, uh, you know, indictments and all this stuff, and and so you you have to be careful with what you say. Um, I am unfortunately very familiar with that. And so, um, what has it been like for you personally to deal with this? Uh, I mean, it's, the the frustrating part is the pace because you're stuck at government's pace. Um, you know you you get things that are are presented to you that you need to to deal with or do uh, or take care of, but you can't actually do them. You have to wait for a hearing. You have to wait for uh, whatever the next meeting with a government person is, and uh, all the while you have to just sit there. You can't say anything. You can't do anything because. Uh, anything you say can and will be used against you. I'm sure there's a bunch of people who are going to freak out about what I've said so far, even though um, the government already knows everything that I've said. <laughs> That's the funniest part. Right. So everything I've said, the government already knows. Uh, so I'm not really worried about it um, in in that respect. But it's just, it's like, look, man, I want to, I want my kids back in the house. Uh, I I know they belong back here. And so we're working towards making that happen as fast as possible. Um, there's a bunch of uh, misinformation that comes up because the public doesn't have access to everything, uh, mainly because there are laws and that involves children, and so they don't get access to everything, and that's that's the way that goes. But um, you know, like the, for example, people say like I'm I'm not submitting to drug tests or whatever, which is completely false. Right. Uh, I'm 100% compliant with everything that the government's asked me to do in regards to. Uh, child custody stuff um the as for the criminal case that's going on uh we just don't have anything to do in the criminal case until our next hearing is the uh, 21st and so i just have to wait of uh, next month so uh -huh. like you know i work with my lawyer and and we figure out what to do uh in ahead of that hearing but that's a ways out and so and again in the meanwhile I you try and just figure out what what the fuck life is uh between between constantly thinking about this uh, pending legal issue and also, you know, still trying to, uh, you know, live. You, you, you cut out for a sec, but um, just live. <laughs> you have to live life regardless, right? Um, and so um, I, I'll, I'll ask you this. Um, <laughs> my internet is like completely fucking up. Um, okay, so it, it seems like we're we're back on. I'm recording. It's this really bad. As well. Yeah, yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. Um, sorry, I had to run away from the hurricane uh, in the in the Yucatan. Uh, so uh, I'm in Mexico City right now, uh, but. Um, and and you can confirm or, or deny or, or or whatever um like your kids have been taken from you though correct uh my kids are <laughs> taken from me uh my kids are on a, a what's called an emergency placement um it's related to uh you know the their parents were arrested and the kids have to go somewhere 
thankfully our we have significant amounts of family close by and uh and they were able to you know they're able to house our children in the meanwhile so our kids are with family um and uh but uh you know we're they're not at home if that makes sense yes There's, i've seen some speculation out there that they went with like uh sure. strangers or something like that no that's not true they're with they're with family and uh and we get to see them. It just has to be, you know, there are rules around seeing them. So they have not been taken by the state, is what you're saying. I mean, they've been placed into uh, a temporary placement with family. So in, in that respect, with your own family, like, with your own relations, though, right? Like not like just brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and to be clear, to be clear, our, our children are like, um, how do I analogize this? Our children are like in a pre-trial probation. Uh, we have, they have not, we haven't even had our, our trial on child, uh, like child custody. It's, uh, it's what's called an emergency placement. Um, the determination is that an emergency existed within the home that was uh, determined by the allegations from the execution of the search warrant, right? Uh, the search warrant execution as the internet well knows alleges that a substance was removed from my home sure. and uh so in light of that uh there's an emergency placement that occurs until the the county or the state is able to adjudicate whether the children are in need of ongoing uh services that hasn't happened yet we haven't gone to trial on it um so right now it's it's like i said it's like a pre-trial probation to analogize it to a criminal case so and and again, you you can get into this or not. Do 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 you think that that's being used against you, like in 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 one manner? Like, of course, you want your children back uh, in your home, uh, and you know you have five kids. And I, I'm I'm reading this, and I don't know the full aspect. And it's like, wow, are they talking about separating? Let me let me address something. Kids? Hold on, let me Go address ahead. something real quick. Sure, there, sure. The, the real quick, the the chat. Some people in the chat are misunderstanding what I'm saying. Um, the pretrial probation uh, is us as the parents, and the children are in temporary placement. I'm not blaming the children. Anyone who thinks that no. I said I was blaming the children is retarded. I'm saying that there was an emergency placement determination made, and that's akin to a trial probation. Um, the the actual trial on a uh, trial on whether or not uh, the children are in need of protective services happens later. But the way the state operates is that in the in the interest of the child, they defer to the uh, the side of safety, right? And so they they presume that an unsafe condition existed because of the search warrants execution. Um, once we go to trial, they'll make a determination if the children need to be placed into foster care uh, or returned back to us. Or if there's like, if they need to, you know, go for like a, a temporary time, the state wants to move forward even farther. That all happens later. That hasn't happened yet. Right. Yeah. And the, the, there will still be a determination on that. But um, what, like, and again, I, I have to be Larry King here or whatever, but like, what what has that been like on you? Like, I feel like um, I know how it's like where people demonize you and you're not a real person and you're considered, uh, you know, just a demon or whatever um what 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 has that been like for you uh to deal with this um that part is it's it's simultaneously frustrating and it's also not uh because one thing of course you know you the truth like you know what happened yes no one else knows uh the state doesn't know you know that they have to construct you know their story and then uh i go and the state go and we we argue our stories that's the that's court right so that hasn't happened yet but in the meanwhile you know what happened in your own in your own house and with your own kids sure and um and no one else does but 
the only story that the people on the internet hear is whatever comes out and it's from the state unless i decide to go out and and tell the full story obviously uh there is no way to talk about anything in your own best interest outside of court like there just isn't uh it doesn't matter who you are or what your story is there's just no way to do it so um i have to wait and tell that story uh to court before it can be stated online. So the consequence of that is that in the meanwhile, people will determine whatever they determine. And so it's like, it sucks because you know, uh, you know things that didn't happen that people think did happen, but that's all they can go off of is the information they have. So you can't really be mad about it. You know, you just have to kind of fucking suck it up, man. Like, and, um, and it sucks, but, what are you going to do? So what happens now for me is wait, eventually tell the story uh, to the court. And then once that telling is done um, and everything's resolved, uh, you know, I can, I can share my side with the world and then they can make their determinations or keep the same ones that they've made. And that's just, that's the fucking ropes, man. Like there's nothing you can do about that. Now I'll ask you a, a couple tough questions here and, and you you can answer as you please um you know there are th first off i've stated on the record um you know there's a follicle test i i don't put any stock in that you you don't have to say anything there by the way uh but i think that's bullshit but um <sighs> So okay, so 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 they have so they have that they're throwing that out there and putting it out there with one nine year old and I hate to even mention the age and and I don't I won't mention the name, uh, et cetera. I appreciate uh, that. Yes, because it's fucked up. I mean, you know, like, I mean, it's the most fucked up thing I've seen actually, and I've seen a lot a lot of fucked up shit, um, but. Um, what is the, like, what is the, is the feeling from you and your wife, by the way, who I've met as well. And, I, and by the way, me and you've had beef and we talked a lot of shit about each other and this is your first appearance back on the show in, in many years for many reasons, uh, because we talked a lot of shit. Uh, but I, I never, you know, I, I, I never would have wished anything like this upon you, uh, or upon your wife or upon your, your children. Like it, it's, it's, it's insane. Um, what, like, what has it been like to deal with personally? Oh, uh, I mean, like the what you're what I I think you're alluding to is is shit like uh, that the the follicle test or whatever. Yes, uh, which is got its own story. And and again, this is a frustrating one to talk about because there's so much to that. Um, and and. People are going to take that in the opposite way. I'm not even talking about there's so much to the results or whatever. I'm talking about there's so much to the release of that and the circumstances around it that, again, um, that whole story isn't even done being told to the court yet. So, like, there's there's so much about that, and I, I can't say anything, which sure. really fucking uh, sucks. Because um, what I can tell you was the, you know, when we were informed, uh, we were absolutely incensed. Um, because frankly, that result's fucking impossible. <laughs> well, that's what I said, because like, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It makes no sense to me. Um, it, it doesn't jive with reality. In my opinion, I've said that publicly already and it's insane basically, right? Like it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but, um, that, that being said that there, 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 and again, you know, you have to be careful with what you say, but um, it seems to be being used as a uh, hammer against you um, in other regards. I, and again, you can comment or, or not comment on that, but like... 
I think I think what you're if I can infer your question in the hypothetical without details, um, there's a there's a a thought that the state would use various things as leverage in maybe another situation. So um, there's uh, there's sort of in a situation like this where you have a criminal case and a custody case, you have two parallel tracks that are happening on different timelines, and what happens in one can affect the other sure. in very like very impactful ways. For example, statements in a child custody case may impact uh, the criminal case leading to liability. Like if I were to say something in the child custody case, they could technically use it in the criminal case. Yes. So what, what that does is it makes it really complicated to communicate with the state uh, in the custody case because they... They want to talk about a whole bunch of things and saying anything regarding certain subjects, um, you know, puts you at the chance of having a statement misused against you in the other context. So it's uh, it makes it really fucking difficult. That difficulty only benefits the state because the state then has the ability to say, well, they're not answering questions. Like, well, I have a Fifth Amendment right to not answer questions. Uh, of any kind. But then they say, well, if you don't answer questions, how can we bring children back to your home? I'm like, I don't know. Why don't you meet your burden to show that they shouldn't be there? And it goes back and forth like that. So it's um, like without getting into specifics about what things the state can do, having this parallel track on the two cases means that things that happen in one impact the other and timelines in one can impact the other. And the state uses that leverage in both cases at the same time. They know you want your kids back. They also know that uh, anything that you say to them in the one case can be used against you in a criminal case, and they're looking for a conviction. So those two things are sort of uh, Re adverse interests Wigger for Wagner me, said $2 and they're parallel uh, and it's contributing interests to, to the get state. The so that's to their advantage. The and um, I hope that's you know a really, a really good shitty part about being in the circumstance that I'm in, test. is like I just have to navigate that and uh and deal with it and you know that's that's why you uh that's why you hire the right people to do it now but, but before i go into m hole um I, I guess i'll go into it now um but in a certain way um you know he he was last week accused of abusing his wife headbutting her and choking her and um and again you can refrain from whatever you want to say uh about him um but he's presented himself as this truth teller and you know it's like okay well his two ex-wives were, were besties at one point and you know, you know, he's been accused of, of, of choking and, and headbutting uh, April. And, you know, you can you can get into this or not. Um, but um, that, that certainly changed changed the dynamics of, of how some people saw what he was saying. Look, I um Here's what I'll say. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing about Aaron that I've said basically every time. Aaron, uh, on what he says. Aaron is his own man. He gets to say whatever he wants to say. He has his own show. And uh, I hope he makes a million dollars. People can assess his credibility without my input. Uh, a brief statement on the allegations of the um, uh, that were in the restraining order petition that then allude back to um, allegations of domestic abuse between Aaron and April. All of that shit happened... Uh, all of those allegations and stuff happened before I had even, I think before I had even first encountered April, which was, I was on one simp cast with her uh, in late 2022 or early 2023. I don't remember. And yes. then I didn't, uh, I didn't re encounter the Imholtz until um, September of last year. So uh, all of that stuff happened before I met them. And I'm, you know, I'm not involved in that situation. I don't know anything uh, about it other than what people um, have read in the, uh, you know, in the fucking petition that was uh, leaked or whatever. Like, so 
I, I can't really comment on it. I don't know. Right. Well, yeah. And again, I've been accused of things I didn't do uh, by women. And, and so, I'll, you know, I'll give him, you know, who knows what happened there. Um, but um, it, it certainly changes, uh, in my opinion, at least, uh, like his... <laughs> True teller persona, like, uh, like I don't know. You you don't have to comment on it. I'm commenting on, commenting on it myself, right? Like it, it's like oh, okay, this is guy's angel, and then it's like oh, okay, maybe he's not right. Uh, and so um, and and all that came out. Um, he, he he certainly said a lot about you. Uh, in your family and um, April herself, um, you know, he alleges she, she's still there with you or like at your side home or, or whatever. You don't have to, I'm, I'm not asking you to confirm that at all, but like, um, you know, I saw Dick Masterson, friend, a common friend of ours, um, say well, well this kind of changes the situation right like th this might be uh a, a guy protecting a, a a woman from from uh, spousal abuse uh right like um and you don't have to confirm that or deny that but um well, well, i, I want to address that real quick uh there's a tendency for some people to try and like uh promote themselves as uh, some sort of noble generous hero or whatever look guys my concern right now in all of this is that uh, I have an ongoing uh, felony charge and um, right now I'm focused entirely on getting my children back where they belong in their home with their parents. So um, like I'm not, uh, if, if people want to speculate on any sort of uh, motivations and stuff when they don't have any of the external details, that's what the internet does. It's great at speculation and gossip and um, what I'll say is, is this, uh, the people involved can speak for themselves if they choose to. Um, and, uh, it's not my job to, to do that for anybody. So I'm not claiming to be any sort of hero. I'm not claiming there's a reason to be a hero. Uh, that's other people can go ahead and, and do their self hero promotion all they want. I'm worried about my felony and I'm worried about my family. Um, that felony charges to be clear before someone has a fucking autism fit, but I'm worried about the <laughs> felony charges and I'm, I'm worried about my family, like, uh, trying to concern myself with any other thing. Uh, that's, that's not there. Do you think he'll go to jail? Me? Yeah. I fucking hope not. <laughs> 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 it's <laughs> look, man, I, uh, I, I did my overnight at the uh, at the county lockup, and it wasn't it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't the worst thing ever. I just mostly slept because I have narcolepsy, so I just laid down, went to sleep, woke up. There was another shitty meal there, and uh, did that again until my arraignment. But um, it, Minnesota, like I can briefly talk about this because it's a general thing. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Minnesota has uh, codified sentencing guidelines. Um, Congress got together, wrote a law that says here's how crimes should be sentenced. Uh, and they have three different sentencing guideline grids. They have the general, uh, the general grid, then they have the drug offender grid, and then they have uh, the sex offender grid. So my charge, my felony charge is second degree possession currently, uh, and that is on the uh, drug offender grid. And what happens is uh, you have uh, the two axes. The Y axis is the like level of offense, and the second degree drug offense, uh, drug possession is pretty high up there. I think it's uh, seven, seven out of ten. And they score the, these things the, like points. Yes, I know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. x-axis is the number of offenses. Well, I'm a first time offender uh, as far as the grid is concerned. Like speeding tickets and shit don't count. Um, so I'd be a first time <laughs> offender. Uh, if speeding tickets counted, we know. Oh I'm my god, I saw those. Oh my god, <laughs> he he didn't show up for a speeding ticket. Oh my god, he's the worst guy ever. Anyway, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I, 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 I'll leave that alone. But go ahead. It's fine. Uh, uh, but no, so like the so I'd be a first time offender, and so the the presumptive sentence for a conviction for second degree sub, uh, possession of a controlled substance is forty eight months. 
it's either wait 44 or 48 months doesn't really matter it's one of those two but there's a presumptive stay of execution so what that means is the judge will sentence you to uh the 44 or 48 months whatever it is it, right right and, right. and they'll suspend it out and you're put on probation you may have county jail time and you may have a fine imposed but uh the the presumptive sentence is not going to prison um there's some flexibility in there uh, but deviating from that in Minnesota requires the judge to actually have reasons and that shit's appealable. So, um, look, the, the perspective outlook on us, if everything just kind of goes normal and, uh, and then ends up with us being found guilty, like if we went to trial and we're found guilty, so all, no like plea deal leniency or anything like that, that would be a perspective or a presumptive stage <laughs> sentence of uh it's like i said it's either 44 or 48 months and then um we put Bumble. on probation for like a, a what year is the most or effective two years narcotic treatment now for narcolepsy? a whole shitload of things could happen in the meanwhile right like they could determine that we don't meet the criteria for second degree possession and it would it should sure. be third or they could decide that they found us running uh you know a slave trade <laughs> uh or something <laughs> and, like tack on a bunch of charges uh or i could get like in in really weird theory, like I could get charged with a felony, do a speedy trial and have that trial uh, have me convicted. And then I'd be a first time, like I'd be a second time offender, right? Like all of those things could change the outcome, but uh, the presumptive sentence would have no prison time. And, um, you know, as far as jail time goes, it, it's impossible to say what a judge would do. Uh, and I'm not aware of anything that the, um, you know, currently not aware of any any plans of the county for things like uh, if they wanted to pursue aggravating factors or whatever. There's we just don't have enough. Uh, we don't have any information about that stuff yet. We're way too early in the process. So now you did um, have the judge uh, changed, right? Um, from what I read, yeah. and and what was that reason? Uh, uh, Minnesota gives you ten days, I believe it is, um, ten days to just have a one time shot to remove a judge. And to, to change them out. So um, the judge in uh, my criminal case was the judge in my civil case, which is sure. ongoing. And uh, I requested to have that judge changed. But, uh, you don't have to have a reason. It's literally just. It's just a, a strike. That, it's like a strike, right? You have yep. the ability, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I can see why you would do that. But like, it, it, it doesn't matter whether you have a reason or not. Like, you can just t take that person out, right? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So I want to ask you about that. Um, so um, uh, let me ask you this. Um, th th there is a contingent of your audience or former audience or, you know, you still have a, you know, a very successful live stream. I mean, I saw you the other day, you had 2000 people watching, you know, whatever or, or, or more. Right. Yeah. Praise be. Uh, and that's great. Uh, that's very successful. That's like in the top 1% or more of streamers. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you're still doing pretty well, but um, I, I see people, it's mostly from Kiwi Farms, to be honest with you, um, but um, they'll, they'll say you presented yourself as someone that you're not. Um, that you acted like you were this Christian upholding, you know, um, sure. family man, and you, you, you weren't actually that person. And they felt personally hurt enough about it that they wanted to attack you, which is also a, a totally different level. Like that, 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 that's one thing. It's one thing to say like, okay, this guy wasn't what I was thought he was and i just like said fuck him but also it's, it's another level to say oh he wasn't what he thought he was and, and now i want to attack him uh but uh your thoughts on 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 that you know allegation because it's out there sure so uh it, it's like in two parts one is nick uh presented himself well let's no let's do it in sorry backwards order of what i was going to do uh am i the same uh person that i was when i started streaming well no um one i think streaming itself changes you because you you place yourself in this uh in the public eye and then you know that's more sort of stimulus or input 
into who you are. You get criticism, you get compliments, you get commentary about who you are at a far accelerated rate. Um, if you think about how long it takes you walking around your town to encounter a thousand people, and yet right now on this live stream, we got what, like a couple thousand people watching right now. So you got a couple yes. thousand people who could be, who are uh, possibly giving you input, calling you retarded or whatever. Uh, whereas when I walk around town, only about like 35, 45 <laughs> people call me retarded. And so uh, that changes you. I mean, it, it, it just does. Plus, I'm just significantly older than I was. Six, uh, six or seven years now. Yeah, I started in. Um, I'm coming up on seven years pussy. of streaming. Does like seven years of cream? time, it, generally it speaking, is a pretty drastic for me. Like that's a that's a lot of change that's happened. When I look at any seven year period going backwards, I'm a way different person every seven years. Um, on some on kind of the outward stuff. Now, getting to your, I guess your, the crux of your question with like Nick presented himself as this uh, trad con person. I'm not saying um, that. I'm saying other people said that, right? right? Like, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and I, I think you probably have a lot of experience with this too. <laughs> I do. Is that people, um, they get a glimpse. I describe it as trying to, um, trying to describe the inside of a ship when all you can do is look through a porthole. <laughs> so like true. They, they see this little window and then they, they have to fill in the gaps. And for us, we let you fill in the gaps because one, we can't address everybody's individual interpretation of who we are. There's not like physically time for it. Um, but you let people fill in the gaps. Obama called himself a blank slate, for example, that people uh, post their opinion or put themselves onto. Um, like that's, it's kind of like that, just not as pretentious as Obama makes it. It's, it's just like, similar though. Yeah. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You yeah. go out and you do what you do and you may have a persona or not. It doesn't really matter. And people have to paint a picture. Well, my picture looks like this. Uh, I've been married almost 20 years now. I have five kids. I'm a Christian. We homeschool. So, and, uh, I like guns and stuff. So like people go, Oh, blam, 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 conservative, right? Like super conservative, traditional conservatism. And I tick a lot of those boxes because, you know, I'm fairly, uh, right leaning. Uh, I like low taxes. Um, you know, I, I, I can have complex our discussions about immigration, but I think a country needs to secure its borders, you know, um, of all of, and I believe in capitalism in general. So, like, I, I have a lot of conservative uh, things. So, people, and depending on the subject matter that you encounter, it'll really look like, uh, if you go back, it'll really look like I'm super conservative. But there are a lot of issues that I'm pretty damn socially liberal on. And I've also grown more socially liberal on some issues, uh, you know, as time went on. So, like, that, the combined effect of as people get exposed to just different facets of who you are. Uh, they can take that as like a betrayal, like like you promised them something and then you did the opposite. It's like, well, I didn't really promise it. Uh, and they're like, you didn't portray yourself that way. It's like, well, I, there's a lot of ways I haven't portrayed myself because I didn't really have the opportunity to do so. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I, I try not to like make it into anything bigger than that. If people change, like if they think you've changed and they don't like who you are, then okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not, like, I know who I am and, and where I believe I've changed. Other people have different opinions, and that's cool. Like, I I don't mind. Um, if you like the show, keep watching. If you like making fun of me, keep watching. And if you don't, like, peace, man. It's it's cool. That's part of the, that's part of the business. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. And also, you know, I mean, people only get a certain glimpse into, into your life, right? Like, um... Uh, what what you're talking about on air and um, you know they get this certain persona and believe me I know <laughs> and you know you know I, I don't have to tell you the story uh, and you know a lot of those times were great times um, you know that period of my life um, do the I, I love that period in my life, but um, it ended right, uh, and so, and it was a bad ending, right? So, yeah. like, what else can you do? Uh, but go ahead, say what you want to say. I was just gonna say, like, the different things that people get to do in life. Uh, you know, the, there's like the the family man part of me, the right? Like that part is huge part. Ralph, and, let me um, the, the internet only gets it. this tiny window into it. 
uh, they, they don't see what it's, what my average day is like and, and how I interact with my kids. And that's fine. That's not really their business. It's not what I put online. Um, and that's, you know, that also means that people will speculate about it uh, to a higher degree with less, with less uh, facts to base your speculation on. That's again, that's the trade off. Some people put their kids like all over the place and uh, that always weirds me the fuck out. Like, uh, you know what? Big- I regret that because, you know, I, I had a child. I, I can't be too specific, unfortunately, no, uh, because of legal reasons. But um, and, you know, you know, I, I put them out, put pictures out and it's like, oh, I want to show it like normal people do that. Right. Nick, you know, I'm, you know, what I'm talking about like, oh, here's my baby. So and so like, oh, wow, it's great. It's great. It's great. But you don't really have that leeway as as a person like we are um and as we go online and talk a bunch of talk talk a bunch of of bullshit yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's it's part of it and so i mean i remember when i first like went in and i was like oh shit i gotta actually lock down my facebook page because i got yeah i got these big like you got pictures your kids up there or whatever and it's like well you could try and go back and start curating your facebook page or it's like or i could just log it the fuck down and only use it to talk to my family if i ever need to like that's that's about that but um it's uh, it's just a different thing. The the advantage that I had over you is that uh, I had my kids a lot earlier, true, and a long time before I was involved in like uh, and talking all this online bullshit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And combine that with uh, with Lady Raggins and I were always kind of paranoid about having our kids out there too much. So we already had pretty limited, um, you know, pretty limited sharing of our children's like pictures and stuff. And so once once we start or once I started uh, streaming. And um, and being out on the internet more publicly, it wasn't hard at all to kind of lock that down. And there are very few instances where my kids show up on something. It's it's almost never on something that I've done. So, but um, there are some though. Uh, yeah, of course. And, like, and, so, and so I'll just cut you off there, and not not to yeah. be rude, but no, no. Um, the reason I I cut you off there is because um, the church aspect. Uh, yeah. and, um, you know, you had spoken publicly of, of your disagreements with, with certain aspects of church teachings, uh, that, that church, church's teachings, et cetera. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, I have not shown this on my stream because I don't like, I am horrified by thinking about that happening to my children. Um, but there, there, there are, they're out there. Right. Uh, yeah. and so, um, what do you think about that in general? And what do you think about the church in general? And would you do it again to put them out there like that? Um, you know, it's a, it's an interesting thing you never really think of. Like, uh, you never think that, Oh yeah. A lot of churches, uh, kind of have a camera and they just show, you know, sure. they, they just, they're filming their sermons and sharing them out there. And, um, some of the churches, like, uh, I used to go to this when I lived in the tw- uh, twin cities, I would, my friend was a associate pastor at one of the really big churches there. And we would go a couple times and they have like fancy fucking camera work. They got like, all these, uh, 8k cameras and they like zoom in on people and track them around and, you know, their sure. worship stuff, like big fucking rock concerts and stuff. And then you have small town churches where it's one static camera that's just taking a wide shot and there's not someone like panning and scanning the whole fucking time. So they are going to invariably pick up some of the congregation. And uh, I never even thought about it. Right. But uh, then then people were like uh, posting a video from the church service is like, holy shit, yeah. that's wild. Um I didn't that's, show it for the for the record I, I because I I, I, I don't that. feel that's appropriate to be honest and the fact that they name your children in these documents without redaction like I, I feel like that's fucked up but I didn't show it but anyway go ahead continue your thought yeah it's um it's I don't know it's uh it's weird as to our church you know they're I'm not gonna speak too much about it um, look uh, every community. Every community, it doesn't matter what kind of community is, has um, has similar characteristics, right? People are effectively people. And uh, there's some variation in some of the numbers of like 
gossips or busybodies or people who are really accepting, you know, like that, uh, there's some variation amongst groups, but it's all basically the same. You, you get a distribution of, of everything. Uh, and so, you know, it, let's just say that there was, um, there's a lot of shit said by, uh, members of our church that is completely fucking false and completely baseless, like legitimately baseless. Uh, and if they had simply asked anybody, uh, these things could have been dispelled. And I'll address one of them specifically because uh, this one's come. This one's come up a lot, uh, or it came up a lot a while back. There's so much juicier stuff now, but um, there was an <laughs> allegation, for example, that uh, that uh, Lady Rackets and I went to a casino and left our children at home yes. in the care of our oldest. Now, for one, that would be legal in the state of Minnesota. Uh, our oldest is old enough to do that. That's not acceptable in our house. That has never been, uh, that would never be something that we would do. And the only times we have ever gone to the casino uh, is there are three times. Twice was for the Make-A-Wish Ball uh, this this year and the previous year. And then the other time was, uh, was at Christmas. All of those times, um, our children were with Lady Rackett's parents. Like, so we've, never left our children e even if we would have it would have been legal but we never did that because we're way like we <laughs> guys we we Matt hired a full-time fucking nanny home. just to quick make to sure Luke. that our children always had supervision and to make sure that there were always adults uh readily available to transport the children to to feed and clothe them and to make sure that they were supervised and so like this it's it's it was wild to read that because like all you had to do is not ask us. You didn't have to ask us. All you had to do is ask Lady Raggett's parents, who you know like they these people know them. If they would have just asked, like, oh man, they went to the casino and they left their kids at home. They would have said, no, they were at our house. That's it, solved. And so it's like, but that allegation gets made and put in a document. And if you read that, it's like, well, someone heard that and told the pastor that, and he's like, well, I don't know if that's okay. Well, first of all, if you read the law, that would be okay. But second of all, we <laughs> we didn't fucking do it, and so that gets uh, that gets shared around, and it's like, well, no, like we. It's a small like, town. It's a small town. Yeah. Right, yeah. And if any, all all people had to do is ask. It's like, well, yeah, we could we could have corrected that real fucking quick, but uh, but instead you went to the government. I guess <laughs> it's weird, man. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a strange fucking attitude, in my opinion. But and and I'll ask you this: Do you regret living in a small town? Um, because this has been brought up by Tick Masterson and others, and um, common friend of ours, um, like that this would not have happened, or possibly not have happened, if you know you were in. Miami or um, St. Paul for that, for that matter, right? Like a, a, a big, a bigger city um, where, where, where people gossip about you in a small town. I am from a small town. I was born in Memphis, but I lived in West Memphis. And so it was a 20,000 person town. And so people talk about you all the time and, and, and throw all this stuff out there. Um, do do you have some regrets over that? Uh, no, I mean, look, uh, you can you can always you can always say something would or wouldn't have happened um, somewhere else or under some other circumstances, but there's no way to like know that. Uh, there's no way to sort of gauge that. And as you know, like the part of part of all this is uh, as was brought up, like we're we're in the public eye yes because of our own choosing in a lot right. of ways but that means that you know we would have been in the public eye in presumably all other things being equal in any city and so could this have come up in the exact same way i mean it depends if we were in a if we were in a big city uh, lady raggets and i probably wouldn't be going to like a, a mega church like that's not the feel we would go to so we might have the same sort of environment uh, church environment that led to the sort of gossipy uh, bullshit that was going on. Like, um, so it's, it's hard to fucking say what would happen. I don't, I don't like to speculate. It would have been different. Uh, I know what Dick is saying, um, but no, I don't regret living in a small town. I, I like it. I like the country life. I didn't think I would. I was raised in cities, but uh, I like it out here. It's peaceful. 
Until there's a bunch of sheriffs in your fucking cabinet. <laughs> So they're knocking at your fucking door. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand. But um, so, okay. Of course, people are trying to raid this chat, uh, and they can't get in unless I let them in. And I'm not gonna let them in because uh, you know it's it's me and you, uh, yeah. right uh, here. Speak, so. Speaking of, I got, I I got a. Book it in about nine minutes, man. That, that's I'm, cool. I'm sorry. That's cool. No, it, it was an hour. It, that was what was agreed upon. But, um, but and I'll do. I'll come back on if you want to like continue the interview. It's just, uh, it's in about nine minutes. I gotta, I gotta run. Um, so, but I'm not, I'm not opposed to like again scheduling out because I know we had a lot of technical difficulties at at the we start, did. and I, and and so like happy to do that. Not a problem. Yes, I would love to do that, and um, I would definitely uh, take you up on that offer uh, because we did have some te technical difficulties. But um, um, so uh, I, I'm 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 trying to to think. You you know um, I, I I know you don't want to talk about Aaron and all his bullshit that he's put out here. Um, uh, did you lose your way um, in a certain respect? Did I lose my way? Uh, I don't know. Um, that's, a, that's an interesting question because the answer to that could presume a set of circumstances that uh, is true or not true or partially true. Um, what I'll say is this, uh, as far as, again, whatever's Aaron, whatever Aaron's saying, that's his own shit that he gets to say and determine his credibility on your own. Not, sure. I'm, not helping, I'm not helping anybody do that. What I'll say is this, um, I made plenty of choices uh, in life and made plenty of choices about uh, over the past year that I would do the exact same and plenty I would do differently. And um, it's, it's not really worth dwelling on that shit. You just learn from what happened and then you modify your behavior going forward. Um, I don't know if I lost my way because I'm not sure what way I had other than the way I went. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Like, uh, I, 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 and again, I, I, I say this to people, they only get a glimpse of you from, from the streaming. And, and you and I have talked about this um, uh, briefly, but like um, being a, a streamer and, and, and putting it out there, but you only put a little bit out there, right? Like you, you, yeah. people don't really understand what it's like uh to be under the microscope most people don't at least um and so it, it, it's it's hard to deal with when that shit blows up yeah and it's it's weird because you have a couple options when um you know when that when the microscope gets turned on you or sometimes it's a telescope right like uh you have a couple options and it's like you can try and address things uh, you can try and joke along with it. Uh, you can try and deny things or you can confirm things. And the the reality is that streamers do a mix of all of it, right? Like it, you, sure. and you, sometimes you're throwing fucking darts. Like, it's like, do you, do you like roll with these jokes? And then the jokes become like, I was just, I was actually just talking about this with uh, Lady Raggets, um while we were driving today. It was like, uh, uh, in in our sector, in the sector, right? Like there are things that are <laughs> jokes and there'll be a joke for a while or like uh, maybe someone has a really bad day and uh, and there's like a meme joke that comes out of it and it starts off like funny and meme -y, but then something else happens and something else happens and it makes it like way more serious and, and fucking brutally mean. Yeah. And then you're like, that, that joke that was kind of like funny and lighthearted is now fucking vicious and... Like we're throwing darts trying to like figure out how to do it. So sometimes you roll with a joke at the beginning, but then it becomes this vicious thing and you're like, well, now I can't, I can't reel that back in. There's no way to do it. And so um, other times you just have to kind of fucking like deny shit outright. Like when it's, when it's really bad, I guess, but you also don't have time to address everything. So it's, it's a fucking tough uh, sort of circumstance to be in because you never know what to do 
or or like how the internet is going to take something or how they're going to change like what the what the advice is on how to handle something because do you remember when the advice for everything was lean into the joke yes i do yeah how's Vito doing with leaning into the joke <laughs> right <laughs> not Christ. well yeah yeah um and it that's not good advice by the way uh but um but yeah but that's the oh just lean into it just 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 play into it no big deal um and it 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 doesn't work out that way now i'm going to run through some um some super chat I, I know you don't have long um and I, I i would love to have you back uh like you said um for for another conversation um and it, it's funny because um you and i had, had a great relationship for years and then all of a sudden we didn't and you know many reasons for, a, for whatever it, yeah it is the, what it the is. reality though is it was a it was a bunch of stupid little misfires and it miscommunications was. and and there's like you have those and then you have little people prodding uh on the outsides and then like uh those prods like overlap with a joke and then something gets misunderstood and like one person will have a shitty day and they'll take it bad and the other person will have a shitty day and take it yeah. bad and then all of a sudden like uh you've been you've been like prompted into having a fucking fight with someone you were chill with just uh you know just like a month before it's weird man like what the hell is that like why why this blow up in my face it's crazy honestly uh because uh you and i we 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 met in person I'm, i met you i met your wife i had good times with you guys um and um and not in a nefarious way by the way to be clear oh, um, oh no, oh, no you started god damn it Ralph. god damn it i knew this was a bad idea <laughs> but but i mean like i i knew you guys personally right uh yeah. and we met in person and i in, enjoyed those meetings and enjoyed your company and your wife's company and you know uh, hanging out and then things get twisted and yeah you, you know the, the, there's certain aspects to it we could go into it all it's not worth it but like um i i will ask you this and then i'll run through the super chats and and the and the um more critical questions um that that, that were sent to me um real quick so I, so I can get you off here um yeah, and, real, real quick, man. yeah real quick but um well and and something just and Keith Ellison through. sent five dollars Nick it is the fact that only you okay your wife all right well, look look I, I'll get I'll, I'll get to that but um what I'm what I'm saying is um people see what they see on their screen and they they take a certain perception of it and they they feel like personally hurt um if you don't live up to their expectations right um yeah. and it's happened to me many times uh right and as and um I, I i don't know what you think about that um but uh, if you do have a thought on it go ahead i mean yeah well anytime we all generate expectations about everything and when they're met or exceeded it's great when they're not met it sucks and uh there's various degrees as to how much that is true in either direction and the the, the degree is you know proportional to how much investment you have in it some people have a lot of investment in our shows and uh our personalities some people like we we meet them and, and see them whenever we go to live events you see that i've i've seen the same set of people several times at multiple shows it's like you kind of get to know them if you if you then betray uh something even if you didn't mean to but like you somehow betray right. that then that person's gonna really be pissed off some guy who like watches a clip of you one time is like oh i'm that that guy's an asshole and then he watches another video a year later he's like yep that guy was an asshole like that that doesn't matter to him at all you know so it's like uh that definitely happens and um there's nothing we can do about it though like it, at some point you can like if you're charging if you're charging money to sell someone a product that's based on a set of principles then you betray those principles that's bad if you're like talking online and people have the opportunity to contribute to the show uh like paying something 
and and then they don't like something that you do, that's a different character to me. Like that's not false advertising. Like that's not the same, right? The one is like, I'm selling you this thing, but it's bullshit. The other one is like, <laughs> uh, you're participating in a thing and having fun. And then you don't like something later. And it's like, oh, well, then they just have the choice to say, okay, well, I won't do that again. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes, so. it makes perfect sense, actually. And, um, you know, I don't know. It, it's a show. It's, it's entertainment. And then some people take it personally um, when they don't feel like you um, did what they thought you should do, right? Uh, yeah. And so I completely mm. understand. I'm going to run through these real quick, and I'll speed run. And and, and so just to get you out of here, uh, and I, I hope we can have you back. This has been the first time in three yeah. years since you've been on the show. Uh, you're a Kill Stream Hall of Famer. Uh, obviously, you've you've done so much on this show uh and and so i i, I don't want to make it just like about this drama like i'm actually happy to have you back on the show regardless of all this right uh, yeah man hey can I, I i like really have to go can you hit me with one critical question and then seriously save them uh and i and when i come back and we can do it soon like i can address them but i i'm i'm up on a hard deadline that just came up so like uh I got I got to go. So hit me with a critical question like as fast as you can. That's please. cool. I, okay. Well, let me let, let me look through these. Um Okay, g give me give me one second. Um and 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 I'll look through um um what about Drax and Camelot? Uh so here's the thing. I don't have I barely have fucking any time to watch things that are out there. So people will send me stuff about like, so-and-so said this, so-and-so said that. Here's, uh, here's the thing. I've talked to Camelot a couple times. Um, right now, mm. most of the people I talk to are lawyers. Uh, <laughs> and, and Camelot's racing and stuff. Like, I don't know what he said. Camelot's been my boy forever. What if he, I, I haven't heard him say, I hate you. I hate you. I'm going to kill you now. He's never said anything like that. So like, I'll, I'm not going to like make any decisions on that. Drex, dude, I've, I've talked to Drex one time in like the past eight months. And, uh, you know, it's like, um, I don't know what happened with Drex, but uh, I haven't talked to him. He hasn't been out here in forever. Uh, I was, you know, I'd love to hang out with him and like actually catch up. I don't know what he said or not said either. I've heard some stuff, but it's like, I can't go off what other people say someone says. You know what I mean? So it's like, and, and I just, I'm focused on like actually dealing with the, the real shit right now, rather than, um, rather than, uh, keeping up what other streamers are saying. Uh, one more question only cause people, um, bug me about it. They, 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 they claim there is other CPS like involvement before this, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, you can clear there, that. there are three. I can clear this up real quick. Sure. There are three. There are three things that came out in a. There's a report today. It's like a discovery report or something that got uh, I think filed, and it talks about three prior CPS interactions. Yes. Um, one one of them was in 2000. Well, the file number is from 2009. That's not actually when it was. That's not our family. Uh, Lady Raggetts and I were foster parents. Um, really? Between, yeah, yeah, we were foster parents before our uh, first child was born, and we stopped being foster parents uh, just a little bit before our second child was born. Uh, Lady Raggetts was pregnant, and she was put on bed rest because she had uh, some bleeding that they were concerned about, and so we were no longer able to keep fostering uh, when uh, she was put on bed rest because I wasn't home and she wasn't able to lift, you know, the kids. She so um, the kids unfortunately had to go to uh, another family, and then they were out of our care at that point. It had nothing to do with us. That's just we're part of the file because we were the foster parents. I don't even remember the last name of that file. It was a long fucking time ago. Uh, there was like a February fifteenth report, uh, and a and I have no idea what the hell is up with that report. It was ignored by CPS. And then the, there was a 516 or 5, 515 or 516 report. Uh, that's the, the infamous the, one from our yes. pastor. Yeah. And that one, um, that one was also actually ignored by CPS. Uh, the, it's called screening them out. So CPS found that there were not substantial allegations to meet the criteria to merit an investigation. And so they ignored them. 
uh, again, the CPS involvement in our family is strictly related to uh, the execution of the search warrant and the allegations Whitner resulting sent $1 from, from that uh, around, if around the substance the that was allegedly balloon. removed from our home. I have Ask to say all these alleged to the make sure that there's no whatever. But this is all the government allegations. That's what uh, that's the family matter that we have. The other stuff was ignored by CPS and has not been uh, re-pursued or anything like that. So um, people don't have to take my word on that. Believe me, disbelieve me. It doesn't fucking matter to me because I I'm worried about the case itself. Uh, but hopefully someday I can like show uh, you know the story. Like, but I gotta wait till after everything's done. And with that, dude, I gotta yes, go. I was saying, uh, I, 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 I want to end it with this. Um, <sighs> I guess just the just the mental toll. Uh, like <laughs> I've been through a lot myself. Um, how have you been able to survive this uh, and still? You know, a lot of people say, "Hey, he shouldn't be streaming. He shouldn't be talking. He shouldn't be doing this. He shouldn't be talking to Ralph." Like, um, how have you been able to 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 do that? Um, in spite of what people are saying the uh uh the true raw honest answer is uh not very well it fucking sucks um every day sucks and then like you you do a show or whatever and people are like oh he should be this he should be that he should be mad he should be sad he should be upset he should be uh contrite or remorseful or whatever it's like yeah you, you are all those things all the fucking time but it when you're doing a show you, you gotta go you gotta go to work you gotta do your job and um, like I could get on the stream and be pissed off and, and like screaming and, and hollering, but that's not going to do me or the audience any good. So, uh, you, you kind of pull it together temporarily, like you would when you do anything else in your life. And, um, and then you go back to shit being really fucking hard later, uh, later when the show's done. Um, and the so, show yeah, is actually uh, a relief though. Right. Like that's how I feel it. Right. Like, uh, when I have things going on in my life, like the show, I mean, you know, minus the, yeah. the bullshit, right? Like, but it's almost like um, uh, a good distraction, right? Like, it, it's like I can get away from this for this period of time. I can do my job. I can I can focus on this. And then, you know, when it's over, it's over. Like, I'm thinking about all the bullshit. But um, I, yeah. I don't know. At least for me, that's how that's how it is. It. I mean, it, it is. Uh, it's a nice little – It's it's a relief in that way, but it's also a task and tasks sure. help because then you're not thinking, but dude, I, I really, I, I'm no, sorry. No, I really no, got to no, go. No, no problem. Uh, no problem. Go ahead and go. Uh, and, um, I thank you for coming on the show and giving me the, the first exclusive, uh, interview. Uh, and I would love to have you back and I know you're under a lot of stress and I wish you the best. I wish your family the best. Uh, I'm sorry for the things I said, um, in the past, uh, like, uh, you know, I shouldn't have it's, done that. And so like, we, like we said behind the scenes, there's way more important shit than, than shit that was said in the past. So. All right, man. Agree with that. Uh, catch you later. We'll talk Peace soon. Out. Peace. Peace out, Nick Ricardo. Thank you, sir. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.